are liberal arts in decline? When I say liberal arts, I'm talking about college majors that fall under the liberal arts category. And Kellyanne, can we have the first chart? We do. Interesting. So here are four charts, and this comes to us from the National Center for Education Statistics. So these are people that know and publish this kind of information. And this is a almost 20 year look. It's about 18 years, from 04 to 2022, eight years to take a look at the decrease or increase in the number of bachelor degrees awarded. So in other words, let's say you're 18 years old going to college in 2022. You would have been born in 2004. What percentage would your mom or dad's generation been of that degree? Take a look at English, top left. 50,000 English degrees a year, now 33,000. So 18 years later, down. History, about 30,000 a year, now 21. Foreign languages, 16, 17,000, now 14. So in other words, foreign language degree might still come in handy if you work in foreign trade or the UN or something like that. Um, still come in handy. But certainly English and history have decreased. And then philosophy and religious studies, isn't this interesting? Started at 10, 12,000 20 years ago, and it's at 11,000. But it decreased until we got to COVID. Kellyanne, we got to COVID, and all of a sudden people are going, I got to find God. Maybe I'll get a degree in philosophy <laughs> and religious studies. Everyone's dying. I need God. But it shows you these are all humanities and liberal arts degrees, and it shows you how they have changed. Now, is this because of parents saying, I don't want you to do that? Is this because of students getting smarter, saying, you know what, I'll get something else that maybe I could do something with as far as a career. Those are just kind of general study things. Go along for the party, study American history or something. Uh, not that American history is bad, but agree American history, what do you do with it? Um, or there are just no jobs. Or is it D, all of the above, like the classic exam? You know, I think it's a little bit of that. So now, let's go take a look at broader categories of the share of the bachelor's degrees awarded. So there's four majors that we could see the difference over 18 years. Now let's go over those same 18 years and let's group those specifics into bigger buckets. Humanities is the purple line, which is English, philosophy, et cetera, liberal arts. Then engineering is the green line. Comp sci, computer science, the blue line, and math is the orange line. So you've got STEM in the green, blue, and orange, and then you've got liberal arts across college. You know, um, and by the way, for those of you studying engineering, when you have to take general elective courses, humanities and English and philosophy, that is where you find the girls, usually mostly girls, across campus. For those of you who are engineering majors and are wondering where are all the women <laughs> or people that used to identify as women or whatever the hell we call it now. But take a look at this. Humanities, you know, 8% of the degrees awarded back in 03, 04, now it's 4%, 50% down. But engineering goes from a scant over seven to over 9.4, but look what happens to comp sci. There was a time it was cool to study comp sci, and about the time the market crashed, 08, 09, boom, people were studying comp sci again. And math has just had a steady march up. So in other words, degrees that you can use, like in STEM, are now almost 20% of all degrees, and humanities is cut in half. There is a very interesting moral of the story. Now, why are they doing it? Are they doing it because there's opinions? Are they doing it because they hear on podcasts that a STEM degree is better? You know, I don't know. Maybe they're, are they doing it, Kellyanne, because of the ability to find jobs and how much those jobs pay? What do you think? Possibly. Possibly. Let's go to the next chart and unlock the answer. So now... Unemployment rate across the bottom, low to high, and then the median wage at mid-career, and they're calling mid-career 40 years old. So 22, 25, 22 to 20, excuse me, 21, excuse me, 18 to 22 is where most people go to college. 22 to 25, you, you're locked into your first job, and then you go to 45. And, 40, and then another 25 years to 65. So give or take 40, 
as I'm trying to do math in my head, I need more vault. <laughs> this is mid-career. So mid-career, let's look up at the top. Engineering degrees, $120,000 a year, and then you look at the bottom, 3% unemployment. Interesting. Let's look at fine arts way out there. <clears throat> fine arts, $60,000, $62,000 a year, 12% unemployment rate. Fine arts lives in the humanities line. Why did the humanities line go down? It may have been parents giving encouragement. It also may have been students saying, I can't make jack with that degree, and there's a lot of people competing for very few jobs. In other words, there's a high unemployment rate in that. Kellyanne, what do you think of this? Not too long ago, you walked the halls of college and stepped out into other things. So funny story, I was a double major in English and theology with a minor in art history. So my degrees, uh, this could have been me. So in other words, you were studying to work on a nuclear sub. Yes. Absolutely Aha. not. Uh, you don't want me on your nuclear sub. But um, thank God this isn't me because now I work for a media company. I've been blessed and lucky enough that I get to use my uh, knowledge that I learned in college for this job specifically. Um, but I feel bad for all my classmates that were in my classes with me, majoring in history and art and uh, theology. Like it, We're all the way at the bottom here. Yep. So you joined a growing media company and you're getting high-end skills. I would argue you're probably using your English skills for, and a degree in that, that direction, but the rest of the stuff, <laughs> not so much. So you are living proof that if you get a degree in this to make a living, sometimes you have to go work in that. And there you have it, which I find is very interesting. The other thing is, why is it important to pick a major where you can actually get paid? Interesting. What kind of student loans do you have? I currently have a, around, probably over now, $30,000 in debt left. So that's a car. You still have a car left. And oh, wait, wait, wait. You were telling me you just, um, Plus my here car. in the United States, October 2023, yes. they just turned your payments back on. They turned, they turned off the deferred payments. So now I have to start making my uh, student loan payments again. Super fun. Interesting. Yeah. So in other words, what has happened to the cost of education? We've talked about this. Pat's talked about it on the PBD podcast. But I found a chart that's got the exact stats we can bring up. So bring up this last chart. This is why it's important to get a, if you're going to get student loans, at least get student loans for a degree where you can get paid so you have a fighting chance to pay off the student loans. And by the way, you still having a car left, um, a small car, not a big car. 30000 is is real, though. That's a, that's a real number. But... Um, you have degrees in other things. So you're just basically paying for the experience of college, probably some discipline, some maturity, some things that happen sure. there. But you're certainly not in a, a STEM career making 150 grand a year. And let's go back to this, take a look. And look what has happened to college and tuition. Since 1980, 23 years. So let's go back to that same thing. Um, excuse me. Um, we are we are sitting here 43 years. Yep. So a full full blown 43 years, and inflation on education 1,246 percent. Books they give you they give you a deal on books are only up 949 percent, but overall inflation the U.S. Um, consumer price index 285 percent. So in other words. Tuition has gone up almost five times the rate of inflation, which means the price of getting that English degree and having the wrong degree that you leveraged by getting student loans is heavy. Yeah. So there you have it. <clears throat> There's the stats. I don't make them up. I just comment on them. That's not an opinion. I'm just showing you what's there. You may not like it. We got some chats here. And people seem to think that, oh, I got a degree in history and I did just fine. Good for you. Maybe you took a degree in poli sci or history and then studied the L for the LSAT and got into law school. Uh, history and poli sci are ways to get into law school. But law school is an advanced degree for an advanced education, for an advanced profession that makes you more than 60 grand a year if you just had a poli sci degree and you're out there trying to figure out life. So I'm not condemning anybody. I'm just saying, look at the facts, America. 
Would you send your kids? And I have a daughter right now that is signing on the line, and I'm sending in the check with that line, mm -hmm. to you know, her college applications. And everything she's looking for is STEM. Yeah. Not, and she doesn't want to be an electrical engineer, but there's other forms of STEM. There's business statistics. There's business management, which is not in STEM. But having business statistics, advanced statistics, that's one of her interests. That's important. I'll pay for that because that is advanced skills go along with a business management degree. Boom. Start your own company. Be armed with stuff. It's just so practical. Uh, and that's where I see it. But she doesn't see it as being sentenced. She thinks it's pretty cool. She's very interested in, in business stats, specifically sports stats. She thinks very interesting in applying money ball to many different sports and things of life. So here she's got an interest in it. I'm willing to pay for that. Good for her. But if she was just going to study American history for the hell of it, you know, I, I got to sit back and say, you know, you know, wh why do we do this? And just you know, have a defined plan because dad, I want to be a corporate attorney. I want to be a contract attorney. Oh, so you want to do that and then go to law school. Okay, well, let's talk about that. Let's get on the track. But um, kind of kind of stark. Yeah. What, what's out there? The numbers are real. So, and by the way, you can go Google it and search for those very same stats and you'll, you'll see them everywhere that I just represented and uh, we're presenting you the truth.